Who are we? We are 16 undergraduates, three graduate students, and two faculty members that spent 11 days in rural Haiti. Our group consisted of several departments, including animal science, food science, agronomy, agribusiness, and horticulture. Our trip began with the meaningful experience of crossing the border into Haiti. Um, I guess how I would describe crossing the border would be a very intense experience for me. Um, we had landed in the Dominican Republic, and as we drove towards the border, it was a lot of green, lush, like farmland, trees, very pretty countryside. And then we'd been, we'd been through all the videos and the pictures of telling us what the border looked like, but until you actually get there, it's kind of a different experience. Um, this picture is actually taken on the bridge in between Haiti and Dominican Republic. This is the Haitian side. Um, just on this back side is all green trees and green grass and a little city. From here on out, it was all like barren dirt which is a really big experience for us. Once entering the country, we are finally able to get the first-hand experience of the culture and partnerships we are going to encounter for the next week. This began with a Heifer International Passing on the Gift ceremony in Wanana, Haiti. Passing on the Gift is a piece of Heifer International's mission where a member of the community passes on their animal's firstborn offspring to someone else in their community. By doing this, they are creating a project that is sustainable and continues to give. In this village, 12 heifers were passed on to other members in the community that were in need. During the ceremony, they sang a song about how this has affected them and relieved their pain. <laughs> After seeing the impact a heifer project can make, we were excited to contribute to a project that was still developing. We had two projects in Milo, Haiti. The first was working with building a goat fence to divide a pasture for rotational grazing. The second was starting seedlings for cocoa plants. Although these projects were beneficial for the well-being of the people in Milo, it was the relationships that we built that made our work successful. When we built the fence, it was muddy. We obviously had the language barrier, but then we also had a lack of tools. Um, when we've built fence here, we usually have post hole diggers and shovels and cement. We had one spear kind of to dig the holes and one hammer to pound in the steeples for the barbed wire. And we also had a group of probably 10 or 12 year old boys that were kind of showing us what we were supposed to be doing, um, but none of us really did it to their standards. So they kind of just did it for us. Um, the way that we secured the post was just throwing the mud in really hard and then kind of patting it down. Um, so it was definitely a learning experience for us because we had to set aside what we knew and what we had previously done here and try to do it the way that they wanted us to do it. These relationships we made in Milo were only a few of those that we would make the whole trip. As the trip progressed, we continued to find that partnerships for future success were being made. Some of our main relationships were Heifer International, a Haitian agriculture university, Antinor Furman, as well as CTAD, another agriculture group in Haiti. Our goal with having these relationships is not only to develop our own relationships with them, but also to make a connection between the organizations. In this way, we are creating sustainability in our projects, along with those to come between these partnerships. Along with continuing to develop these partnerships, plans for future projects and trips have started to form. This trip has changed the way we look at our own agriculture practices, as well as those in other cultures. This has opened our eyes to how our knowledge and practices of agriculture can be used to help others around the world. We hope that future trips will continue with the progress we have made.